Hello, I'm Chief Randy Remiger with the Algoma Police Department here to give you the department report for April of this year. The PPP meeting was held on April 26 here in City Hall. The total cost of service for March were 107 compared to last year when we saw 105. The Algoma Police Department will be conducting a joint effort for hiring part-time police officers this May. If you know anyone who's interested or has any questions, please feel free to contact us or the Kiwani Police Department. The PPP currently is finalizing its new proposed ATV UTV route ordinance that will be sent to City Council for consideration. If this is approved, this will allow ATVs and UTVs to be th used throughout the entire city with the exceptions of Crescent Beach, the marina, and all city parks. As a reminder, we will be starting our summer code enforcement on May 1st, so please ensure that your yards are cleaned up and that your grass is cut. Finally, our speed trailer is back out, as seen on Jefferson Street. If you have any ideas where you'd like to see this put up in the city, please... Hi, I'm Jean Marsh, the administrator at Algoma Medical Center. The Algoma Medical Center Board of Directors met last week. The annual slate of officers was nominated and elected. Joan Gressel will continue to serve as president of the board. Marge Rodrian continues as vice president, and John Pabich will continue as secretary treasurer. Our board welcomed new member, Sarah Guth. Sarah is replacing Don Wagner, who served on our board for a number of years. Under old business, we discussed the Paycheck Protection Plan process. We completed an application for loan forgiveness, and we're waiting to hear from the Small Business Administration regarding that. Under new business, the board reviewed and approved an updated ethics and compliance program. This is a federal requirement for nursing homes. Um, and it deals with professional standards for, for services that we provide covered by government entities like Medicare and Medicaid. Our new Director of Nurses, Kylie Aradnik, was introduced to our board. Kylie has developed a nursing assistant training program for our facility, and she received state approval to provide this class under a COVID public health emergency waiver. This allows us to hire and train caregivers to become certified nursing assistants. The Friends of Algoma Auxiliary Report was reviewed. The Friends will be purchasing three stand-up gardens for our residents to plant vegetable gardens in. We closed our meeting with an update on, on COVID-related subjects. Almost all of our residents have been vaccinated. We have only 10 employees who are vaccine resistant. We were able to scale back our routine COVID testing of staff, but with a recent uptick in the Kiwani County cases, we're now back to testing weekly. New guidelines came out from the CDC today for vaccinated residents, family, and staff, and we'll be implementing those next week. The next meeting of our board will be at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday, May 27th. City, please send us an email to algomapolice at algomacity.org. Once again, it's algomapolice at algomacity.org. Thank you and have a great week. I'm Sarah Robertson with the Parks and Recreation Committee, and here are the following um, things that we've been working on in our department in the month of April. The Parks and Recreation Committee is continuing to work on the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. This past month, community members were invited to participate in a public discussion about what they think should be the priorities of the projects in the Parks Department. The plan should be ready by June. The Parks and Recreation Committee discussed the reopening of the Youth Club for youth activities, such as weekend nights at the club. We are looking at opening mid-June to give us time to hire new staff and train. Youth under the age of 16 will be required to wear masks, as well as um, staff that are working with the youth. We will be hiring new staff at the Youth Club, Summer Park Program, and Parks. Uh, call the Youth Club for more information if you are interested in any of those positions. We are working with the Kiwani County Health Department on offering a free exercise class for individuals over 60. This will be a 10-week program, three days a week. We have started registrations for T-Ball for five and six-year-olds. It will be held on Wednesday nights at Peterson Park starting June 16th. We have started to do some repair work at Christmas Tree Ship Point. We will be installing highway fabric under the riprap to help stop some of the rocks and gravel from being washed up into the landscaping areas. New sod and plants will be planted as soon as it warms up. 
Stantec and Friends of Crescent Beach will be doing another planting event on May 15th. Friends of Crescent Beach are also looking for volunteers to help with regular beach cleanings throughout the summer, as well as volunteers to help with maintaining the areas of our beach that have invasive plant growth. We'd like to thank the students from Algoma Elementary School and the local Boy Scouts and Cub Scout troops that have helped clean up the beach this past month, as well as other parks and areas in the city. We're very grateful for their hard work. The next meeting will take place on May 17th at 6 o'clock at the Algoma Youth Club. I'm Kathy with the Algoma Public Library and I'm here to give a little update on what's happening at the library. The Algoma Public Library Board of Trustees met on April 19th. The library is now back open, full hours including Saturdays, which we are open 10 to 3. Diana and Braylin will be attending the virtual Wisconsin Annual Public Library Conference the beginning of May. We are currently looking for applicants for a library aid. Applications and information can be found on our website. I will briefly list some of our kits that will be available to be picked up at the library while supplies last. We have a May Day grab and go kit for all ages, May 3rd, a Maker Wednesday kit for young children on May 5th, a Zen garden kit for adults on May 5th, a tea party kit for children on May 13th, Mad Libs kit for families on May 17th, a family history kit for families on May 19th, and World B Day kit for all ages, May 20th. We will also have a garden markers kit for children and families on May 24th. Hello, I'm Pete Hawk of the Algoma Utilities presenting the minutes of the April Utility Commission meeting um, held April 12, 2021. Uh, all members were present. The March minutes discuss the recruitment process for the utility clerk position Schmidt question when the utility clerk plan to retire in the end of how long we're accepting applications for the position the clerk plans to retire April 2022 and the utility is accepting applications until this position is filled we expect to fill it soon and the job posting will be removed after the offer of employment is accepted the old business we discussed electric vehicle charging stations um, there are local businesses researching the installation of an EV charging station. The utility will work with these businesses and share funding and grant opportunities as they become available. Information about costs and potential grants will be reviewed in, at future meetings. Um, there was no new business. There was no conference attendance requests. Um, financials, Bennett, uh, approval and payment of the bills and payroll as presented carried uh, motion and seconded for the appro to approve the 2020 year-end financial reports including the Gasby 68 entries roll call vote motion carried um, the approval of the January February and March quarterly financial reports as presented and that carried. It was motioned and approved. The 2020 annual Wisconsin Public Service Commission report as presented. And for the manager's report, Hawk explained how the new electric advanced metering infrastructure, metering reading system will function. Um, that's a new system that we have coming and there'll be some metering changes throughout the town. Um, since this meeting, we have had one lineman, one employee of ours, a young lineman, um, Matt Liebeck, six-year employee, turned in his resignation, and he will his last day will be May 14th. Um, we wish Matt luck. We will have a we will, we have posted a positioning opening for his job, and um, open to anybody that's interested. Um, Check out our information if you are interested in being a lineman in Algoma. That is about all I have. Next meeting will be Wednesday, May 19th at 530, and they have been held here at City Hall. Thank you. All right. I'm Jared Hines, City Administrator. I'm going to be reading the report for the Community Development Committee. The Community Development Committee met on Monday, April 19th. Uh, there was no old business. 
Um, under new business, Dale and Mary Goodner of the Algoma Bird City Committee uh, were on uh, participating in the meeting and expressed their gratitude for the city's funding uh, for the Bird City um, application for the city of Algoma, which we were awarded. Um, and uh, Algoma Bird Celebration uh, Observing World Migratory Bird Day uh, is scheduled for September 11th of this year and will be held at Knudsen Hall. Uh, Sarah Krause of the Friends of Crescent Beach was also present, uh, notifying the, um, providing an update on the funding, the fundraising opportunity for the uh, 25th anniversary celebration for Crescent Beach Boardwalk. Uh, she let us know that they met their goal and they will be having the celebration uh, commemorating the 25th anniversary on June 22nd at Legion Park at 6 o'clock. Uh, and the Crescent Beach Boardwalk stories can be read on the Friends of Crescent Beach website. Uh, friendsofcrescentbeach.org. Uh, we also had a, a grant application for the CDC, also presented by Sarah Krauss on behalf of Friends of Crescent Beach, uh, for Soar on the Shore. Uh, there was a grant request in the amount of $300 and that was approved. Uh, Chair Pabic uh, provided an update on the Door Kiwani Legislative Days um, and, and talked about uh, what was discussed there on April 8th. Um, Nothing uh, too exciting, but just provide an update on, on the, that annual meeting there. Uh, Kiwani County Economic Development Corporation annual dinner. Uh, Chair Pavic uh, updated everyone on that. That will be occurring tomorrow night, uh, Thursday, April 29th at the Northbrook Country Club. Uh, you can buy tickets for that in the amount of $25 if you want to go in person. Otherwise, it is also available for free uh, to attend via Zoom. Uh, Chair Pavic will be there representing the city as will I. Uh, giving a presentation on uh, economic development in the city of Algoma for the past year. Uh, and then I provided my report as city administrator. Uh, for that, uh, mostly focusing on the redevelopment project, uh, redevelopment area number two, which I will cover in the redevelopment authority uh, report. Um, but basically we had a public hearing on uh, Thursday the uh, 22nd, I believe, um, regarding that. And we are also currently working with CGI Communications Inc., which is the company who is working with us to place the All America City Award uh, winner banners uh, from the school district's Live Algoma program. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for May 17th at 6 p.m., and it will be available via Zoom. The Redevelopment Authority met on Thursday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, provide an update of redevelopment area number one, which is the condo association Bell Harbor condos on the south side of town. Uh, more or less just providing an update to the authority that that development is on track uh, as the foundation for building number two of the three of them that are planned there uh, has been in place and uh, substantial completion and occupancy will need to be attained by the end of the year this year and there is no indication that that will not be met. Uh, the main thing for the night, however, was the public hearing for the CDBG public facilities application. This is the competitive grant we've been talking about and the amount of uh, up to $1 million of a matching grant uh, that we are applying for. This will supplement the CDBG close grant that we have uh, thus far received, uh, which that was about $700,000, just a little bit short of that. Uh, so this will be, could be an additional $1 million, uh, which we would use to acquire the blighted properties on the block between the Denny's Supermarket, uh, Super Value Grocery Store, and Perry Park. We would use it to acquire the properties, uh, pay for the relocation of any displaced residents, as well as the demolition of the blighted properties. And then eventually our plan is to, after that, uh, replace it with low to moderate income housing, uh, starting with a little bit higher density on the east side of the block and then as you go to the west on the northern side of it and kind of circle around the block um, counterclockwise would be to a little bit lower density so two family homes on uh, townhomes uh, low to moderate income housing uh, the next meeting uh, will be held on tuesday june 8th at 6 p.m here at city hall so regarding the april 5th the regular meeting of the council uh, under There was no old business. Under new business, uh, Parks and Rec uh, hiring Mitchell Zimmer for a seasonal position. Uh, there was also an update provided that uh, we were using donated funds to purchase new uh, garbage and recycling bins for the beach. 
there was also a resolution authorizing me as the city administrator to enter into an agreement with CGI uh, Communications Inc. Uh, for the Community Development Banners program that we received for the uh, All America City Award winner uh, banners. And I am working with the Public Works Director and the Utility Manager. Uh, as well as CGI with identifying exactly where uh, those banners will be placed. Uh, we also approved an agreement with Green Bay Metro Fire Department for paramedic intercept services. Uh, we currently have intercept service agreements with uh, Sturgeon Bay as well, I'm sorry, Door County, as well as Brown County Rescue. Uh, and sometimes Green Bay Metro Fire Department also has to provide those services, but because we did not have an agreement with them previously, they really wanted to push that. Uh, so we do now have an approved agreement with them, uh, similar in structure to the other two. Uh, so that was good that we got that done. Uh, we also established a policy for the transfer of cemetery grave spaces. Um, and then a couple items on here regarding to our CDBG application uh, for the competitive grant. And basically, the, the council needed to pass a resolution authorizing us to uh, submit the application as well as guaranteeing a match of funds and again the, the funds that we're using is the match and the amount of five hundred thousand dollars are coming from a previously awarded grant uh, the cdbg close money so we're using 500 of the almost seven hundred thousand as the match for the public facilities grant which could potentially give us a total of 1.7 million dollars uh, we also entered into an agreement our contract with strand associates uh, every year they have to perform uh, contractual services for us regarding the wastewater treatment plant in relation to our WPDES uh, pollutant permit. As a municipal uh, entity with a wastewater treatment plant, we are a permit holder for the DNR uh, as a member of the Wisconsin Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. Uh, and a part of that, we have to report any pollutants that we're putting in to make sure we're meeting the requirements of our permit, any, any pollutants that are being discharged into, in our case, the Anape River. So uh, Strand Associates will be doing that. Um, there was a, a, a recommendation letter from the Tourism and Promotion Commission regarding their budget and the recommendation for a room tax. They are not recommending any change to that. And then there was a, also a discussion on uh, masking in the city-owned, wear, the wearing of face masks for COVID in city-owned buildings. Uh, to be clear, this was in regard to uh, city-owned buildings, not including the library, utility, or the med center, they each have their own governing bodies that are making those decisions. So this decision was strictly for uh, city hall, uh, fire department, the police department, public works, parks and rec. Um, a lengthy discussion, but ultimately the decision was made. We are not requiring that visitors to these buildings wear masks. We are recommending it, but we are not requiring it. Um, ultimately, it's up to the visitor's discretion what they feel comfortable with. Um, provided my report. Uh, the mayor also wanted to take the opportunity to uh, thank uh, Alders Gressel and Weiss for their service. They did not run for re-election this last time, uh, and so April 5th was their last meeting, and um, we wanted to just take a moment to appreciate their service to the city. Uh, on a similar note, uh, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank all the poll workers who worked for the spring uh, election uh, on April 6th. Um, as many of you know, we have a, a new clerk here started in February. And, um, you know, obviously it's a learning process with any position and she's doing an outstanding job. Um, but I also just wanted to highlight the service of the poll workers from that April 6th election because uh, according to the, the county clerk, uh, our elections have gone off just basically perfectly. And I think that that's really a reflection of the returning and continuing service of those poll workers. And so I wanted to take a special moment here to, to recognize their contributions and really express our gratitude from the city's perspective for helping that go off without a hitch. Um, it really truly is appreciated. Um, we also had a reorg meeting on April 20th. Uh, the next meeting will be on uh, Monday, May 3rd, 6 p.m. Uh, so with that, we, as I just alluded to, uh, the council had their special meeting uh, on uh, Tuesday, April 20th for the reorganization meeting. Essentially, this is just swearing in the new aldermen uh, who were elected, uh, the two who ran for re-election as well as our two new aldermen. 
Uh, we appointed a city council president in uh, for this next year is Scott Meverden. Uh, we appointed a council member to the Planning Commission, our city attorney, uh, our official newspaper, which is the Green Bay Press Gazette once again. Uh, identified our municipal depositories, in other words, the banks that we use for our various accounts, and the mayor's appointments to all the various committees, uh, commissions, boards, and, and, and so forth. Um, and those can be found either on our website or if you come to City Hall, we have a, bro a brochure listing all of the membership for those organizations. Immediately following this uh, Common Council meeting, the special Common Council meeting for the reorg, we went into finance and personnel, the regular meeting on the 20th. Um, and really the only thing there was a, a couple of closed session items regarding um, some contract proposals. Um, so I can't really get into that uh, as that was all in closed session. And then the uh, council met shortly after that to um, formally approve one of the agreements that we discussed um, is for financial services. So um, that's what I've got. I'm Matt Murphy, the Public Works Director for the City of Algoma. And on April 20th, um, we had our Public Works meeting at the City Hall here in Algoma. Uh, a couple highlights from our meeting. Um, we discussed the removal of all the trees and the stump grinding throughout the city that is continuing. There's a little bit of stump grinding left to do, and the city will be filling those uh, patches back up where they were ground out with black ground and grass seed. Um, and then it would be up to the homeowners to continue to water those until that uh, grass is established um, on the tree lawns. Um, looking at a couple different options on doing a little bit of seal coating on a couple of streets we're working through that that was discussed um, the delivery of our uh, brand new um, beach cleaner uh, surf rake that was actually delivered here to the city of Algoma late last night um, we did try it out a little bit on the beach today and we will be continuing to use that Monday on the beach um, but the guys last this last Monday um, cleaned up all the driftwood on the beach and that was burned. Um, hopefully by midweek next week that will all be taken care of, ready to go um, for tourist season to start here in the city of Algoma. A um, couple other things that are going on, we're doing a little black topping. Um, the Algoma Marina will be open Monday uh, for uh, the marina season to start. All the new B dock is complete in both A dock and B dock. The fuel docks are all put in. Um, starting this Monday, everything will open up down there. And uh, that's all I have. Our next public works meeting will be May 18th at 8.30 a.m. here at City Hall. Thank you very much.